You can go ahead and start. Y'all are back 12 feet, so I'm gonna remove this so you can hear me and I can weld without my glasses fogging up. Uh, we're gonna start with the welder. So this is a gas metal arc welder, um, G-Maw or wire welder. You need a few things. You'll need a shade 10 helmet, safety glasses. Um, you'll need welding gloves, like insulated welding gloves, um, the fireproof jacket. You'll need a pair of welder helpers. Okay, these are called welpers. We have an angle magnet, a wire brush, um, spider dip, and we have some metal here. Let's get this one out of the way. Yeah. And we need a pair of slip joint pliers. So these are welder helpers. These are made for the MIG gun. I'll show you at the end how to use these. Uh, but we do not pick up metal with these. Welder helpers, they're very specific to them. We don't pick up metal with these. So when I do this, you say no. 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 Okay. How about this? Yeah. Yes. No. 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 Okay. So we don't want to mess those up. Okay. To the welder, we're going to turn our bottle on. We're using 75 25 gas, 75% argon, 25% CO2. We get our brown lead. So we're using electricity to weld, electricity to melt metal and to join metal together. We have to put our ground lead to whatever we're welding to or a metal table that will conduct electricity. Now we can turn our welder on. This is your lead, okay? This is your gun, your lead. You gotta make sure the lead is straight. You don't want it curled up because wire flows through here. And the more you have it kinked up, the wire will flow properly. Now we have our bottle on. We need to set it to 28 CFMs. And I actually have a black dot right there for you. And what do you know? So see the wire? We're gonna clip that off. And we use the deep side towards the nozzle, that's the perfect length. So to set the welder, all welders are a little different. This one has a chart right here. You can see the big spool of wire. We're gonna take the metal we're gonna weld on, and we're gonna find the diameter with this chart, and that's eighth inch metal. Now, we're welding with 7525 gas. I have it marked right here, we're welding with 035 wire. 35,000ths of an inch wire. You just slide over here on the chart. It says to set it on three and 40. So three is your voltage, 40 is your wire speed. So we can close this to keep the inside clean. Now when we start off welding, we need to clean our piece. One of the first rules of welding is have clean metal, especially with wire welding. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that down, that way I know I have a good ground. Now we can start welding. Whenever you get ready to weld, you need to say cover, okay? And that lets everybody know to drop their helmets down or either turn away, and that way they don't get blinded by the UV light because this is gonna be very bright, all right? Whenever I put my hood down and my, my face is covered, y'all can step in, that way you can see the weld. We're gonna start with the simple bead, which is the very beginning weld for you to start practicing with. So let's cover. If you want to scoot closer, you can. So I'm going to hold my nozzle and I'm going to push in the direction of travel. I'm not going to drag. And it's not straight up and down. I have it 20 degrees off of straight up and down. 20 degrees off of plumb. So as well. Cover. That's a simple bead. Did not have to make any weave with the big gun, just slow and steady. I kept it about the distance of that wire away from the metal and just kept on rocking along, okay? Once you make a weld like that, then you get a good grade. But I will not give you a grade until you make a decent weld like that one right there. 
so we're going to clean that. Now, once you get a grade, then we can move on to a pad. And a pad is actual function is actually functional. The pad, uh, if you need to make a piece of metal thicker to build it up for whatever purpose, you would weld in a pad. So we're gonna do a 3B pad. And the way we will start is we're gonna lay our nozzle 45 degrees into the crack right there. Um, and then 20 degrees off the plumb this direction and we're gonna rock it right through there. So cover. I make sure, I pop on my thumb and I make sure I can move the full um, length of travel. Cover. Perfect second bead on a pad. Now you have to realize, when I welded that first bead, this piece of metal was cold, okay? It was cold. Now it's already warm from that first bead. Now it's even warmer from the second bead. So your metal, your welding will be hotter, your weld will have more penetration. And then if you're welding on very thin metal, it will get to where you can turn it through very easily. So to finish the three bead pad, let's do one more. Cover. third bead of a three bead pad. So we've built up the thickness of that piece of metal. All right, next is we're gonna do a butt joint. Butt joints are very common when you're building stuff. You're just putting two pieces of metal together. You can't do a butt joint until you do a good pad. Sometimes it's difficult to get these pieces lined up just right. We're gonna put about a sixteenth of an inch gap in between those, and when we're welding two pieces, we always need to tack weld the opposite end when we start welding. So if I start welding right here without a tack, this will turn out to be like a deer's hook. It's gonna spread out at the end, and then it's gonna be so such a big gap that I can't weld it. So let's tack weld this. It's the smallest spot. Cover. Okay, that's a good tack. Now make sure I can take the full direction, full length of travel right there. And I'm actually gonna put a weave into this. I'm gonna hop from one piece to the other, back and forth. That way I don't hold it right in the center where I can burn through that crack. All right, cover. two pieces of metal together. And I make this the width of the thickest of piece of metal, okay, on each side of that crack. So I go about an eighth inch on each side, so then my weld is just about a quarter of an inch to three eighths, somewhere in that range. So not just a huge wide weld. All right, that's a butt joint. The next one is you're gonna be required to do is a T. Now T joints are used a lot. A lot of times in your building, you may be only doing T joints. piece of metal. That rust will be an end slider. It will inhibit you from welding properly. So we need to get that off. Do T joint. These magnets are a pretty good guide for a good 90 degree T well. I set that up where you can see it. 
same thing. When I'm joining two pieces, I'm going to tack on this back side. Cover. Now I can weld right through here. So I'm going to be doing a semicircle up from the bottom piece to the top and then back down. Bottom piece to the top. I'm not going to stay in that crack very long. 45 degrees out from the track, 10, uh, 20 degrees in the direction of traffic. So I'm popping on my thumb, making sure I can take the full direction. I'm getting comfortable and steady. Let's weld. Cover. Turn the welder up a little bit. There's a slight bulge right there to be a true fillet weld like that should be. Should have turned the welder up just a little bit. Okay? You could have preheated the metal or you could turn the welder up to make that flat. Let me show you some troubleshooting. Okay? That way, if you know your, your welder might not be set correctly. So these are going to sound, sound different. Let's do one. Too fast to wire speed. Cover. Okay, if you hear that, your wire speed's way too fast. Okay, this is going to be way too hot. Cover. It was extra bright. That bead is going to be super flat. So when I look at your beads, I can I can tell all this because I've had you know experience of looking at these. So too hot, okay? Too fast, and too fast will lead into being too cold. Now let's do one which is a common mistake that I see all the time. shielding gas so there was no gas right there so a good MIG weld a good gas mill arc weld should sound like tearing a rag steadily or frying bacon that's the way it should sound so that's our wells now we need to shut everything down I've got that turned off shut off our welders now that piece of metal is hot right so we will cool that off. In this class, we're gonna do that with water. That way it cools off quick enough for me to see it. Now, if you're doing a real project, water is going to weaken that well. So the proper thing to do is let it air cool or put it in sand. Step one of the machine put up, turn everything off. Step two, roll everything up. We do it the same way every day. Let me show you how these welpers work. We can clean off the tip. That's clean. These fit down in there. We'll clean any splatter off. We can roll this up. Clean up your area, take away any metal that's in here. 
Put up all your tools. There'll be one of everything in each welding booth. There'll be a helmet in there, gloves, jacket, everything. We go pull this metal off. So that's hot, but do you think this right here is going to be hot too? Yes, yeah. yes. So you got to be careful where you put your hands in the shop because you might end up on something that's very hot. Okay, any questions? We good? Awesome.